Let's pay homage to the lineage gurus. Homage to the venerable Mangyang. Homage to Master Sakya Zengkong. And homage to His Holiness the 16 Kamapa. And homage to Master Tukten Tauji. Homage to the Three Jewels of the Altar. And homage to the main deity of the group practice this evening, Mahajundi Buddha Mother. Sumu. Dhamma masters, Dhamma educators, Dhamma teachers, Dhamma lecturers, Dhamma assistants, our disciples present here and over the internet. And our participating VIPs tonight are only two who registered themselves and the least number of just special guests ever. Uh, the Madam to Ambassador Daniel Liang, the Rep of uh, Republic of China, Taiwan to Sudan and Norway, the Assistant Judy, and Dr. Su Lin. So what happened? Oh, you, don't, you didn't want to register yourself as a VIP. They just want to be ordinary people. <laughs> it's my first time to just read two people because I notice there are many people oh. came from other places outside of Seattle or there are many people who are here for the very first time who did not introduce themselves so, if in the future I cannot uh, remember your names, that's okay, that's normal. Because you didn't tell me your names. Actually, it is extremely difficult to recognize all of my disciples. But if you always stand up to introduce yourself, then at least I would recognize you and I know your name. If it is a beautiful young lady, then there is no need for her to introduce herself, then I would notice her. Whether they come from far away places or nearby, I would recognize you if you're extremely beautiful. There's no need for them to introduce themselves. So, the main deity for the practice tonight is Mahajundi Buddha Mother. And before the Dharma teaching, first, I would like to say my greetings. Good evening, everyone. How do you do? Uh, 
这里面没有放大准提和我们的资料。They didn't put 但是呢，我们。Anything on Mahajan? 我常常给大家灌点大准提和。But I often give empowerment of Mahajungi Buddha Mother, and during the empowerment, they ask me. So, if my personal deity Yidam is Mahajungi, who would be my protector? Then I would tell them. Then it would also be Mahajungi Buddha Mother, because Mahajungi can be. Uh, considered as Yidam as well as a protector because she has tremendous power. Like, uh, every day I would perform the Bardu deliverance as I said before. Like in front of the TV Whenever I see car accidents or uh, people dying of death, then I would perform Bardu deliverance right while watching TV. Or if there's a natural disaster and how many people then I would perform the Bardu deliverance for the, the deceased. So whether it's natural disasters or calamities created by human beings, as long as I notice anybody suffering from death or they died, then I would perform the Bardu deliverance while watching TV. I also Bardu delivered uh, all the people that died in all my previous lives that I caused to die, including the flying birds, those with wings, or mammals on land, like the biggest one is elephants, uh, rhinos, I would rather deliver them, bears, and uh, huge snakes, yeah, and then to the smallest ants, I rather deliver them all. Those who crawl on the ground, those who fly in the sky, eagles, birds, then I better deliver them all, including human beings. I was in the military for 14 years. I was never in wars. However, in all my past lives, I have been involved in wars. So I have barter delivered all the lives that died, including babies that died at birth or died due to abortions or children who died young or those who died from sicknesses I bothered to live and at the bottom of the ocean from the biggest uh, whales, sharks, and pirahas, to the smallest one. They all have been barred or delivered, including sea cucumbers, shrimps, I better deliver them all. Those who fly in the sky, 
Those who crawl on the ground. Those who swim in the ocean. All the living beings that you can think of have been further delivered. One day I was very happy. I have butter delivered just about all of them. Cows, sheep, horses, zebras, uh, buffaloes, and farming oxen, dairy cows, all kinds of cows, all kinds of sheep, sheep all kinds of deer, all that I could think of, I have Bharata delivered. And I told Mahajundi Buddha Mother, nowadays I Bharata deliver every day. I should have finished them all, right? Bharata delivered them all, right? And then Mahajundi told me, there's one left, one kind. And I said, really? I have Bhattu delivered all the human beings, including my ancestors. What else that I have not Bhattu delivered? I Bhattu delivered even ants and worms. The tiny animals, bees, flies, mosquitoes. I have delivered them all. There's still something left. And then Chundi told me, Oh, you did not bother to deliver the clams. Do you know? Good. Tiny. Tiny clams. Tiny shells. Mm. shells and tiny shells of clams. Or in Seattle, we also have gill duck, and I about to deliver that too. But she told me you did not deliver the tiny clams with the back black shells. Sometimes they put it into the miso siru, miso soup. And they say it's good for the liver. Do you? Is, is, is it curly? In Taiwanese, it's called la. In Chinese, I don't know the name, so that's why I didn't bother to deliver them. Who said it was Gali in Chinese? In Taiwanese, it's called La. When I was little, I grew up in Kaohsiung, and behind the train station, there was a ditch, like a small ditch. I often swam there, and at the same time, I would pick some clams. And I got a lot of this kind of tiny clams, lots of them. And one time, do you know what moki? How do you say that in Chinese? Uh, it's uh, a 
It's like a、uh, what's that called? 而且他的嘴哦，钻到我的皮肤里面吸血。Like like a 吸血，他不会放。Slug, you know, it's like a slug, that, but it would、uh, stuck stick to your skin, and then、uh, draw blood. And then someone said that you can pee on it. Yeah, it's a leech. Yeah. So otherwise, it would、uh, just get stuck on your skin. It's kind of soft and chewy. You know, it would be、uh, like rubbery, but it will not. It will not let go of your skin. So they got stuck on my skin for a long time, and you really have to pee on them before they release your skin. And then they would、uh, drop. So they they would、uh, hide under the sand like the mud, and then you open them, and on the surface you would be able to get lots of those tiny clams. And I went swimming and got some clams, and I also caught some fish. People fish, but I catch. I caught it. I caught the fish. I don't know how I did it. It's impossible for for you to catch fish. They swim very fast, but my hand is very strange. Like if I place my hand on top of the fish, the fish would stay there. Like if this is a fish, and my hand would be on top of the water, and the fish would stay, then I would catch the fish. But it's slippery. Then I would just throw it、uh, to the <laughs> bank. Then the fish would be mine. Yes.、So <laughs> Some kind of fish, taya, taya. How do you say that in Chinese? <laughs> taya. Nobody knows how to say that in Chinese. That's a. Taiwanese. It's a kind of cod, I guess. And I just, I, I didn't use any fishing rod. I just place my hand on top of the fish, and then I just kind of catch it and throw it to the ground. Then that's, I caught some fish. So I brought the fish and those little clams home, and then I saw my mom sitting by the door. And she asked me, "Katsu, where have you been?" And I said. I brought something for soup this evening. There are some clams and fish, and you can cook some soup. Food for dinner tonight. And then she asked me, "Did you swim?" And I said, "Yes." And then she told me, 
It's okay. Come on. I will not beat you. Come here. It's okay. I will not beat you. So I trusted my mom. I trusted my mom's words because moms always speak truthfully. And as I walk to her, she took a... What do you call that? It's like it's a, the end of bamboo. And then she beat, she beat me until both my legs were red. And from then on, I knew that women always lie. Woman lies. But I cannot blame her because because it's for my own good. I swim everywhere, like on the ditch, in the ocean, and a swimming pool. I love to swim. I swam everywhere, and I knew how to dive, like in the ocean, at the cave there, I mean, at the very deep uh, part of the ocean, I took a breath and then I would uh, go to the bottom. It's the same. I also caught some uh, shells and clams. And sometimes I got huge ocean, uh, rock. And at the bottom of the ocean, there it's very light. I brought it up using the the frog style, but as soon as it got out of water, it became very heavy, and then I couldn't hold it, and then it would drop back to the water. But at the bottom of the water, it was very light. So I dive very deeply, and then I pick up the rock to the surface of the water, and then let it drop back. If I got tired from swimming, then there is a pillar at that uh, that I would just hold to that to rest a little bit. And there are also lots of uh, shells on that pillar. And outside, it's the ocean. And then inside, it's like the inside, the uh, uh, like a cove. So it's rather, uh, there are no waves. Because I love swimming, I was beaten by my mom and dad many times. So if at that time we have hotline for abuse, then I may have called. <laughs> Nowadays, parents cannot beat their children. But in the past, parents love to beat their children. So... Mahajundi Buddha Mother told me that you did not bother to deliver these tiny clams. And I thought, right, how come I didn't think of it before? I have bothered to deliver everything else, including dragonflies, the flies that I caught when I was little. I caught butterflies. I caught the uh, crickets. Uh, not crickets, 
It's the crickets that um, that are on the trees. Uh, when you were young, you caught all those little insects. So, like cicadas and uh, owls and squirrels and mice, cockroaches in the house. And yet, I forgot the clams. And Mahajundi even knew that I did not bother to deliver the tiny clams. So you can see what the tremendous Dharma power she has. Even how to deliver the leech, but I forgot. I forgot the tiny clams, and the only one that I forgot, and yet she knew, and she told me to how to deliver that. So, see, you can tell that uh, that she has great dharma power. So the day before yesterday, I Badu delivered all those tiny clams. So all the food that I have eaten, I Badu delivered them. I have eaten even the palms of bears, and I ate it in Seattle. There was a boss in Seattle who hunted bear, and because he opened a restaurant, he asked the cook to prepare. At, the, at this time, I had some time, and the boss of the restaurant is also a disciple. And so she called, he called me and asked, do you want to come dine at my restaurant? To eat what? To eat the palms of the bears? It's a little like the sea cucumber. It tastes a little bit like sea cucumber, the skin. There's a Chinese idiom. So you you don't place fish and the palms of bears together because they're different. The palms of the bears are very tasty and also fish. And in Hong Kong, too, I eat something that I never had before. Of course, it's not dog's meat. I apologize to the people who love dogs. But from what I know now, it is prohibited to eat dog's meat in Hong Kong, too. But when I went to Hong Kong, someone went to Shenzhen and bought dog's meat for me. And who did that? Master Lin Chin from the 13th chapter. He knew that I was in the military. And in the military camp, there was a red light and there's a board like and said it's the delicious meat. And they would cook a pot of boiling something. 
三花。Mm -hmm. One black. The first, the best one is the black dog. <laughs> huh? And the second best is the yellow one. So that's why I always uh, eye Sharon's dog because her dog is black. <laughs> Good thing I don't stay here for winter. Otherwise, any time I see a black dog, my eyes would glitter. So the best kinds of dogs is the black dog, and the second one is the yellow one, and then the third one is the color, colored, diff, multicolored one. So, of course, I eat some dog's meat, because in the military we ate dog's meat. And then I ate once in Hong Kong too, but nowadays I don't anymore. So I bar to deliver them too. <laughs> Talking about it, it makes me salivate. So I bar to deliver dogs too. Everything. So Mahajuni Buddha Mana was very uh, responsive. The only one that I forgot was those tiny clams. I bought to deliver dogs, cats, mice, everything else. Let's continue to talk about Lam Di. Sometimes, if you can master Bardu deliverance, it's actually very simple. You can chant the deliverance mantra and form the great ocean deliverance mantra. And then you visualize like uh, one dog that becomes all dogs, or one elephant that becomes like a whole plane of elephants. One human being becomes many, many people. Man, woman, young and old, and you bar to deliver them all. And then you form the bar to deliverance mudra, and then you visualize, and then you recite the deliverance mantra. And there would truly be Buddha's light appearing right in front of you. At noon today, I saw the Buddha's light. This afternoon, when I came back, when I drove back at around 4, and I drank some water, and I closed my eyes, and I saw multi lights appearing right in front of my eyes. There's some browns, there's some in square, and very, very bright lights. And when the lights came down, it was very brilliant. And when you Bardu delivered, you let the light bring you up. Most Bardu deliverance would be green, and the spirits are tiny. Like when in the blazing light, there are lots of these tiny green people around the fire. And then when the Buddha's, Buddha's light descend, uh, some are round, some are squares, and they would take the green people, enclose them, and then brought them up. If you have the divine eyes, 
then you would be able to see the other day the one that I saw the ones that I saw were on the left over 10 of them and they were shown the Buddha slides shown on them and then enclose them with the Buddha slide and then uh, take them back up to the sky so you would if you have the divine eye or the third eye by practicing Mahajundi Dharma practice then you would be able to see like this afternoon I saw them too when I closed my eyes not just bright light white lights but inside it there's also brilliant very very bright brilliant glittering lights that would there are about two or three rays that are very very bright and also the light of Homa is also very beautiful so um, they would enclose the spirits and then bring them to to the heavens to skies so the homa tomorrow is that of golden mothers and Golden Mother can deliver many beings. So today we will talk about Lamde. It talks about applying the work. So the real application. If signs of sure death appear and nothing can save him or her anymore, there are four kinds of rites that can be done right there and then, right then and there. The first one is rites for good rebirth. Second, rites for transferring consciousness, which I talked about last week. Third is rights for rebirth at other continents. And fourth is rights of the Mahamudra path. So I will, uh, there will be explanations for each of them. But I will first talk about rebirth at other continents. And why do I talk about this? Because in this human world, we know this is America, and then Asia in the east, and then far east and southeast. Africa, Europe, Australia, and those are continents on earth but here birth at other continents it, it doesn't talk about the earth in Buddhism we talk about the four major continents in the north south east and west I don't know how the translator will will uh, translate about this. In the east, there's the Purvavi Deva, and then Jambudipa in the south, and Aparagodaniya 
and in the west and Uttarakuru in the north. This is difficult to translate, but there must be some correct terms for them. The Monkey King is in the Purva Videva continent in the east. And inside it, there's a death monkey, and that's the Monkey King. So Monkey King belonged to the continent in the east. And our earth belongs to the continent in the south, which is Jambudipa. So human beings live in the south continent of Jambudipa. So these continents do not refer to the continents on earth, but it's like a better realm, like the heavens. So the east continent of Purva Videva is like a heaven. Or the east continent of Aparagudaniya, or the north continent of Uttarakuru. But the earth is in the south continent of Jambudiva. That's the human world, and it's also the heavenly realm of desire. So it mentioned here, so you use the syllable to seal the gates, and yet you leave the Sanskrit hall, and it talk about not practicing, but it also teach to practice. So at the moment of sure death, perform the beginning part of the Dharma practice. At the moment of death, according to the race empowerment, or one also can skip it. For the main practice, it's crucial to sit upright according to the formula, with one's back leaning on a support, the fingers crossed at the back of the head. Use the syllables to seal all the holes except the one that to that leads you to the realm that you wish for. Visualize clearly at the heart area, the sit syllable home, on top of a moon disk, which the heart relies on. So, and say the syllable CG 20 times to raise it to the throat chakra, and on the 21st time, guide it to shoot out from the open orifice. So, so the hole to the heavenly, that's the the good, the good rebirth, which is the heavenly realm of desire, the form and no form. And also rebirth in the human worlds is also considered good rebirth. So human realms and above is good. So Azura, human beings, heavenly beings, they are all good rebirth. But not the others. This is the first right. So at the moment of death, if you want to uh, be born in a good rebirth or to the heavenly realm of form, so at the moment of sure death, you can do the beginning part of the Dharma practice or you can skip it because may, you may not have enough time because you're about to die. If you still perform the beginning part, like the great prostrations, offerings, and <laughs> refuge, and four immeasurables, then you'll probably die already. No time for it. So you just do the main practice. 
So that's why I often say, if you have time, then you do the beginning part, the main part, and the ending part. Then you have to do them all. But if your your time is extremely tight, like you're about to go to leave, then you just do the main practice. And what is what is it? Visualization, mantra chanting, and entering into samadhi. Visualization, chanting mantra, entering into samadhi. That's the main practice. The rest. Like in the beginning part of the practice, like fourfold refuge, four immeasurables, repentance, great prostration, great offering. Those are all the beginning part. And the ending part is better dedication, exiting from samadhi, great prostration, praying, sincere praying. They're all the ending part of the practice. And the main practice, the most important, is visualization, mantra chanting, and entering into samadhi. These three are considered the main practice. So here it is written, for the main practice, your body has to sit upright according to the key formula. This is very important, which is the seven postures of Vairokana. So, but when you're about to die, can you sit in that posture? Of course not. So let me teach you a method, the method to attain Buddhahood in seven days. You lay down and you visualize yourself to be a home, sit syllable. Your body is home. And the sky, you visualize it to be the sit syllable ah. And the hook of this ah syllable, hook on the circle of the home syllable. And with one sound, ah, home, you will lift it up. You are lifted up. But you have to rely on your vital energy, your last breath. So when you're about to die, the key formula is to sit upright in the seven postures of Vairokana with one's back leaning on a support. Because if there's no support, you may fall. So you want to lean on a back or support or wall. The fingers crossed at the back of the head. You place it at the back of the head. So this application is the same as what I said. And use the syllables to seal all the orifices. Use the blue home syllable. I, my guru taught me this. Just the blue home, that's good enough. You don't need to use any other syllables. Any other syllables. You first block the path at the bottom to the evil realms. One is the anus, the green path, and then the water path, which is the place where you urinate, and you use the blue home to seal them. You use visualization, and if you don't know how to guide the various ways, you use you visualize the blue home to seal the bottom two holes. And it's best to have the blue home at the navel and then the seven orifices on the fa on the head, the mouth, the two nostrils, two blue home and two blue home on the, the ears and two blue homes on the 
eyes and you just leave the brow point and the apex, the important ones. And then you visualize clearly the qi of vital energy at the heart area. You still have your breath. And you visualize clearly, lucidly, the qi at the heart area. Inside our body, there's the upper qi, lower qi, the peripheral qi, the fire accompanying qi, and the life qi. So at the moment of death, the one that you can use is the heart qi at the heart chakra. Your heart becomes a lotus blossom, and on top of it, there's a mundus. At the center of the mundus, there's the heart qi, the heart vital energy. And there's also home on top of the mundus. There's also a blue home inside the heart. And then you say, you chant, the syllable si chi 20 times. Si chi 20 times. Si chi becomes he. He. So you just say he. He. 20 times. And then you rise the chi to the throat. And on the twenty-first time, si, qi, and then you guide it to shoot out from the open orifice or from the brow point. Then you would go to the good rebirth realm. But the key point here is you can visualize the blue homes but the last breath, the last qi at the heart, you shoot out the blue hom. Where the apex and the brow point has no blue hom syllables there. So you can make it leave from the apex of brow point. It's best to leave through the apex, then you can go to heavens. And this would be the best kind of death. Because you're about to die, that's your last breath. Then you use this mantra, Xi Ji. Xi Ji. Then you combine it. As you know, Sanskrit, the, the letters sometimes are single, sometimes are double, and it would become a different sound. So although it it's written as CG here, but you combine it to become one sound. Like if I am Sung Yen and you combine it, then it becomes Yen. Like the hui then becomes wei. So xi ji becomes li. So you can just pronounce it as li. You chant the mantra as li. 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 20 times. And on the 21st time, you shoot it out of your apex. You use the sound of Li 20 times to guide it to the throat first. 
So my guru taught me this about the good rebirth. Uh, was running for a councilman, so was campaigning everywhere because Taiwan now is campaign time and he's very tired at night. In sleep, he was shouting, talking into huh? Oh, before sleep, he was complaining, talking about it. And the wife said, I know you would be elected this time. And the husband asked, asked uh, how do you know? Because your snores is the loudest, which is in Chinese, it's also called like the, the campaign is loudest. So just when you're about to die, the sound of your breath would also be very heavy. You use all your power to guide and shoot out uh, your last breath, which is your life qi, or the heart qi. And you use your last power uh, to sh shoot it out. Last night in my sleep, I dreamt of Ma Zhu. And Ma Zhu did not say anything. But when I woke up, uh, my neck felt sore and my knees were swollen and I have a headache. I had a headache. So I felt sore, swollen and painful. But in Taiwanese, it's like you should run for the president. See. So, perhaps Mr. Ge Tai Ming had this experience. That's why he ran for the president. Presidency, because Ma Zhu told him to. The neck was sore, the knees were swollen, and the head was painful. So that's why he claimed that Ma Zhu asked him to run for the presidency. So only if you have seen the journey to the West, then you would laugh. And this year is the year of the pig, so I have to make resolution. I have to stop uh, drinking alcohol, drink, stop smoking, smoke, uh, stop uh, cursing, stop wasting food. Stop uh, luxury living, stop lying, and stop sex. That's the eight precepts. So anyone that can do it, then you become the precept pig, which is one of the of the uh, key actor in the journey of the West. These are all very good. As sadakaya, you have to. You cannot drink alcohol. You cannot smoke. You cannot gamble. You cannot curse on other people. You cannot waste food. You cannot uh, be too wasteful. And you also need to to uh, stop. Yeah. 
desire too much. Hey, yeah, this makes sense. A, a human being, as you grow old, then you would be very uh, precious. You know, like Grandmaster too. As he grows old, he becomes more precious. Sometimes I met a Caucasian and they look at me and ask me, how old are you? And I told them, 75. And they couldn't believe me. They could not tell the age of Asians. So if you're over 75, please raise your hands. There's one there. Yeah, I can tell from your age marks on your face. And the uh, old Bodhisattva, <laughs> they are quite old. Do I look 75? Sometimes I fit 75. I look like I'm 75. When we grow old, we are very precious. Why? Because your hair becomes silver. So silver is more precious, right? And your teeth have gold. Because when you have dentures, then you would have gold. Maybe if you have money, you can have gold crowns or diamond crowns. Then lots of money inside your teeth. <laughs> if someone asks you for directions, then you go like this, pointing to your teeth, to the diamonds inside your teeth. You're asking me? Do you know? There's even sugar in your pee. So that's wealthy, right? So how could there be a sugar in pea? So it must be very wealthy. And there are gems in the kidneys, kidney stones. And as you grow old, there's another benefit that you never thought of. There is a unceasing natural gas. So what is that? <laughs> you talk to someone, or you being asked something, and you go. That's natural gas. Natural gas is expensive now. As you grow old, you are really valuable. Jeez. That's all for tonight. Oh, many, many